What's up, YouTube? My name is Rico, and I am the CEO of Source Wine Asia, co-host of the Made in China podcast, and of course, the host of the Source Wine Asia vlog, YouTube channel, whatever you're gonna call it. And of course, I'm back with another, another one. one. All right, so today's video, I am actually answering another question from the comment section. We had a gentleman called Bali O, and he wrote, Hey Rico, thanks for the great content. I'm planning to come to China on a scholarship, and I was wondering for sourcing and manufacturing, what's the best city, Yiwu or Guangzhou? So, of course, like I said, I, if you guys drop questions in the comment section, I'm gonna answer them. I read every single comment, I reply to every single comment, and if I think it's worth making a video about, I will do exactly what I'm doing right now. So Bali, I will answer your question shortly. So this question was in response to a video that I made called What are the China Manufacturing Hubs? If you haven't seen that, check it out first. And uh, just to give you some context, so we're talking about Yiwu versus Guangzhou. When it comes to Yiwu, you need to watch the video that I made about the Canton Fair as well, how the, the Canton Fair is not what it used to be. Yiwu is basically like the Canton Fair on steroids and all year round, essentially. So like, you know, the Canton Fair is like the biggest China manufacturing fair in the world. And you can go there and source, let's say, you know, 20 notebook suppliers in the space of, you know, five hours. But um, in Iwu, it's all year round and you can walk into a space and there's like a thousand suppliers for the same for notebooks, right? So it's, again, all year round. So you can go in and, and then the other special thing about Iwu is that you can buy small amounts. Like you can buy like five pieces at a time, 10 pieces at a time. There is a lot of raw material suppliers as well based in Iwu. It is less expensive than southern china like suppliers in EU are going to be cheaper than southern china suppliers so there's a lot of advantages there but i would say it's more like if you want to go there and buy quick products and test out a bunch of different things EU is a good place to go in southern china specifically guangzhou guangzhou itself isn't actually as much of a manufacturing city as it used to be most of the manufacturers in guangzhou it's too expensive to be in the city of course so they've gone outside of the city and then they've also gone into the surrounding cities like dongwan um, and Shenzhen and uh, Jiangmen as well. But the thing is, when you're based in Guangzhou, you have obviously the amenities, the offices and stuff like that, and that the history of the city in the manufacturing space. So you have a lot of trading companies, you have a lot of shipping companies, you have a lot of quality control companies, you have like everything to do with manufacturing is here. But you also have the advantage of being one or two hours away from most suppliers. Maybe Jiangmen might be a little bit further out. I think Jiangmen's about three to four hours away from Guangzhou. So if you're gonna be in Guangzhou, you're gonna be dealing with more professional manufacturers. You're not gonna be walking into markets as much. There are markets, but it's not as huge and it's you don't have as many options as in EU. But you, what you will have is you're gonna have big, well, small to medium to large size manufacturers where you have to place 300 unit orders, 500 unit orders, 1,000 unit order, 5,000 unit order. You have, and then being here will allow you to also create like original design products. So if you're in, in Iwu, you might be like launching a bunch of products and selling them on Amazon or selling them, making a Shopify store, or you wanna maybe do drop shipping, for example. Whereas like in Guangzhou, you're gonna be making like a brand. You're gonna be designing your own products or customizing your own products. And it's a little bit more involved. Um, there is, I would say, still 60-70% of most manufacturers are in southern China. However, there are certain things like I talked about in, in that video, the China manufacturing hubs. There are certain things that are just specialized in certain parts of China. So 
if you're talking about southern China, it's very much, there's a lot of injection molding, plastic injection molding. So if you're making like toys and like any water bottles, phone cases, like all that stuff. And then electronics as well, like anything to do with LEDs, even phones themselves, computers, any sort of like electronic product is probably going to be made here. And then if you're talking about northern China, Yiwu and, and the like, uh, Zhejiang province and, and Jinhua, you might be if you, if you might be making like cotton messenger bags or reusable grocery bags like things that involve like those kind of textile raw materials things like that that's more prevalent and that it's cheaper and it's more prevalent in places like Yiwu and in Jinhua and you know and places like that of course there is that in the, you have suppliers for that in Guangzhou or southern China rather but again it's just more expensive Bali uh, my advice to you is like you're scholarship so you're probably still a student it depends on what your plans are as well like are you doing this to start your own trading company or are you trying to sell your own products and what are your motivations when selling your own products are you again going to be doing drop shipping or are you launching your own brand that's going to help you decide which place is best suited for you in my personal opinion and of course i'm biased i think coming to southern china is going to be the right move always just because Forget about Guangzhou, like, I mean, you have proximity to Shenzhen and Hong Kong. Shenzhen is becoming the new Silicon Valley. Like, the, in some aspects, I think it's already surpassed Silicon Valley in terms of um, investment and government, what do you call it, government funding or whatever. And, and then the diversity, man, like, in Shenzhen is just a super diverse place. Like, uh, you have people from all over the world creating tech startups in that area. And then, of course, Hong Kong is... Hong Kong, I've talked about it a lot. Like Hong Kong is just an amazing place to be and the connections that you can make in Hong Kong with very little experience because it's such a small expat community. Same thing in Shenzhen is like, you have a lot of people that are doing amazing things that are willing to meet you just because you're a foreigner and we have a small community there. So I think the networking aspect in Southern China is also a big draw for me. Of course, Shanghai is very close to you. If you take a high speed train, I think it's only about two hours or an hour away from, from Shanghai. And uh, Shanghai also has a huge expat community, but the thing about the expats in Shanghai is I think it's more in the banking space, um, some manufacturing, but more in the you know finance, banking space. And then you're gonna meet a lot of expats that are working for other companies or they have a company and they're sort of playing on a different level, if you know what I mean? like. Southern China has more, well, Shenzhen specifically has more like startups, tech startups. So it's like this younger entrepreneurial type thing, uh, more of a community. Whereas I think in Shanghai, um, it might be a little bit harder to get into those circles. And Shanghai is not cheap. Like Shanghai is pretty expensive for mainland China. Of course, Hong Kong is more expensive, but Hong Kong still has that like expat community willing to meet anybody who's, a, who's another expat, you know? So, I think you have to weigh up your options. Again, I think Southern China is going to be the move, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. So I hope I was able to answer your question effectively, and I hope to see you in the comment section again with more questions. Again, guys, if you want to, if you want me to answer one of your questions, drop one in in the comment section below. And of course, like, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I will see you guys next week. But before you end this video. Be sure to watch um, this two minute clip. We're hiring interns and I want you to see what I have to say about that. Cheers. What's up world? My name is Rico. I am the CEO of Source Fine Asia. And if you're wondering what we're gonna be up to in 2019, besides me trimming my beard, we're looking to hire a marketing intern for the summer of 2019. So two to three months in Guangzhou, maybe one month in Chiang Mai, Thailand, where my business partner, formerly known as China Mike, now Chiang Mike is located. And basically we're looking for somebody that can help us improve and promote our content. So all of the stuff that you've been seeing on the YouTube channel, social media management, things like that. And then I wanna make more day in the life type videos. And then potentially in Chiang Mai, we're thinking about hosting uh, sort of sourcing, you know, big meetup over there. So if you're interested in applying, go to sourcefineasia.com slash intern. And just to give you an idea of some of the stuff that we've done over the past couple of years, here's a quick little montage for you.
right, so if you like what you see, again, go to sourcefineasia.com slash intern. I, I took a lot of time to write the details into that page about the job post and sort of my expectations. And you can apply through that page. So again, sourcefineasia.com slash intern. And I hope to see one of you guys, anybody's welcome to apply, but one of you guys in China this summer.